Welcome back, I'm still Natasha. And now that you've downloaded some basic code, this video will be all about designing your own animations. If you haven't already, check out my previous video that's an introduction to Microsoft Make Code for Microbit. In the last video, we learned to make the strip change to different colors, how to set the duration between them, and I showed you a bonus trick, how to make a rainbow move. Now, we'll continue where we left off to learn about animating the individual NeoPixel pixels. Okay, so what's going on here? In the rainbow animation that we created, each pixel is being colored a different color. We have this block in OnStart that tells our strip to show a rainbow. Then, in our forever loop, we used a block that rotated the pixels by one, and another block to show the results. We'll be using this concept of setting up our pixel colors and then animating the results as we learn to build our own animations too. And let me just organize this a little bit. I have all of these blocks that I'm not using anymore, so I'm just going to drag them back into the drawer and you can see that it'll actually throw them away. Now let's take a step back and talk about addressing each pixel individually. How does that work? We call NeoPixels addressable LEDs because we can program each pixel based on its location or ID number. On a strip of pixels, the pixel that's closest to the micro bit is given the ID of zero, then the next pixel is one, then two, then so on and so forth for however many pixels you have in the strip. And in our program, we'll reference these pixels by their IDs. To see this in action, let's start by turning on the first LED. I'll move these blocks from the rainbow animation out of the way so that we have some space to experiment. I'll go to NeoPixel, and in the More section here, I'll choose Set Pixel Color At and place it in the OnStart block. Now, Pixel 0 is set to red, but we don't see any pixels lighting up, do we? We won't see the pixel light up until we use the show block, which I'll drag into the forever loop. Some blocks, like the ones we've used like rainbow and show color, have the word show built right into them. Those will light up the LED when the block is run, but the ones that say set require that you also use the show block. It's like set deals the cards, but show flips them over so you can see what was dealt. It's also a really common mistake to forget to use the show block. So if you're ever working on a piece of code and nothing is happening, it's likely because you forgot to call show. show anyway, back to getting this pixel turned on. Now you can see that the first pixel has turned red. Now let's animate it. There are two blocks of code that help us animate pixels, shift and rotate. The difference between shift and rotate is what happens when the pixel's ID is greater than the number of pixels in the strip. So let's take a look. Let's grab the shift pixels block first. This block shifts the pixel values down the strip by the number you give it. So in this case, every time the forever loop repeats, the red pixel will shift to the next pixel and so on and so forth. I can restart the code using this button here and off it goes. Okay, that's crazy fast. Let's add a pause block to see that at an actual understandable speed. I'll make it pause for, let's say, half a second so that we can actually really see it. So every time the forever loop repeats, the pixel shifts down a spot and it keeps going until it goes off the end of the strip. And it's technically still going up, but we can't see it anymore because we do not have any more pixels to see it on. Okay, so the pixel is shifted down one pixel at a time. We can also change the shift to another number, say four, and now you see it shifting down four spots at a time. Now let's see what happens if we replace the shift pixels block with the rotate pixels block. I'll drag it into the forever loop and I'll change the pause to something so we can see it a little quicker. Let's say 100 milliseconds. Okay, there it goes. And when it gets to the end, it starts right back at the beginning. Woohoo! Okay, just for fun, let's quickly play with some modifications here. Let's add another pixel. I'll just copy and paste this block here and let's turn it yellow. And let's say it's pixel number three. So now we have two different pixels rotating around our strip. What if we make our rotation a negative number, negative one? Two pixels are drawn and they rotate towards the micro bit instead of away from it. So now we can choose the direction that our animation is going in. You can play with adding more pixels on your own, 
but let's go back to one pixel for the next demo. I'll just select this block and hit delete on my keyboard and I'll change this block back to one. So far, we've set pixel zero to red in the on start block, but what would happen if we set the pixel to red inside the forever loop? If you have a second, pause the video and think about what would happen. Hmm. Okay, are you back? Let's do it. Okay, I'll drag set pixel to forever. Now pixel zero is red and the pixel shift, so pixel one is now red, but then pixel zero is drawing red again and the pixel shift, so they are filling up one behind each other and so we get a wipe effect. But this isn't very exciting because now all the pixels are red and nothing else is happening because when all the pixels have turned red, turning them red again does nothing. What we need is a change of structure. We've been using the on start block to set, or you could say draw, the pixels and the forever loop to move them around. But if we want to make our own animations that start and stop and animate in all different ways, we need to create our own structure to set up our pixels and animate them in a loop. So my goal is to make it so that the pixels fill up with red, but when they're full, I want the strip to clear out so that they can fill up again. To do this, I'll go to the code drawer labeled loops, get the repeat loop and place my blocks inside of it. So these blocks set the pixel color, rotate the pixels, and then show them. And what we want is for that to repeat 23 times because we have 23 LEDs in our strip. So I'll go ahead and tell it to repeat 23 times. I still don't see any change, right? We are repeating 23 times and then as soon as it gets to the end, it just repeats 23 times again. I'll introduce a block called clear. If I go to NeoPixel, it's right here. And I'll place this just outside of the repeat loop that I've created. The clear block clears the LEDs or turns them all off. Let's take a look at what's happening using the debug tool. So now my LEDs fill up one by one until all 23 are filled. And then the whole strip is cleared and ready to fill again. Hooray! Are you tired of hearing me say the number 23? Me too especially since your strip might not even have 23 LEDs. The number of pixels that we have on our strip is important information when it comes to designing LED animations. We'll want to reference it often, so what we should do is make it a variable. Variables are ways of referencing or keeping track of values in our code. I'll go to variables in our code drawer and click make a variable. I'll name it number of LEDs and hit OK. Now I have a block called set number of LEDs. I'll drag it to on start and give it the number 23. Then I can use that variable instead of the number 23 in the NeoPixel block. So I'll go to variables and just drag the variable number of LEDs right here in place of the 23. And I can use it again in my repeat loop too. The thing that matters in this block is that the number of repeats is the number of LEDs that I have. So I can use this as shorthand without even remembering the number itself. And the best part is if in the future I want to upgrade my project and now I have 50 LEDs attached, all I have to do is update the value of number of LEDs in the onStart block. And any code that uses that variable will be updated too. Okay, now we have ourselves set up for success. Back to creating animations. Now let's try to make the same animation that we did before with the single pixel rotating around the strip. To do this, I'll remove the set pixel block and place it before the repeat loop. By the way, if you just click and drag to move a block, it takes all the blocks below with it. But if you hold down either the command or option key on a Mac or control or alt key on a PC while you drag, only the block that you've clicked on moves. That can be really handy so you don't have to keep reorganizing and reordering stuff as you go. So use those keyboard shortcuts. Now this is doing the same thing as we had before when we were using the on start block. It's only setting the first pixel red once, then it's looping the rotation of the pixels. So we just see the one pixel flying around. So now we know how to make two versions of this animation. One with a single pixel and one that fills the pixels or some people call that a color wipe. Let's organize our code so that we can use and reuse both of these animations. What we'll do next is create our own function. 
Functions are a way of organizing our code by giving sequences of code a name. So instead of repeating all of these blocks every time we want to see a single pixel animation, we can just call the function instead. Here's how that works. I'll go into the advanced tab and select functions, then click make a function. And I'll give my function a good descriptive name for what the code does. In this case, I'll call it rotate one pixel because that's what it does. And I can move my rotate one pixel function out here. So now I'll drag all of the code that rotates one pixel into the function. Now, when I go back to the functions drawer, I have my own block called call rotate one pixel. And I can place this in the forever loop. Whenever the program encounters my new function block, it skips over to the function and runs the code blocks inside of it. One really exciting feature of functions is that you can give them parameters. Parameters let you specify some of the values every time you use your function. This will be especially useful for us because we can show the same animation over and over, but set things like color and speed every time. To add parameters, I'll need to edit my function. So I'll right click on it and select edit function from the list. In our case, the type of parameter that we want is a number. So I'll click on number twice to add two parameters. Now I'll name the parameter after the data that I'd like to specify. So I'll name the first one pause duration, and that will set the speed of our animation. And I'll name the second one color. Now we can see the parameters next to our function name and two places to specify our data in the function's call block. But before we go on, we need to tell the function where to send those values. So let's drag the first parameter, which I called pause duration, to the pause block in place of the data there, and the second parameter, color, to the set pixel color block in place of the color there. Now, whatever value I put in the first spot will be sent through the function and placed into the pause block as the pause duration value. 100 is a great pause duration, so I'll go with that. And whatever value I put into the second spot will become the color that the pixel turns. Can somebody tell me what number red is? Uh, we don't have to know that. Only robots know. Robot knows what red is. What we can do is go into this NeoPixel drawer and grab a color picker that's right here in the more section. We can drag this to our function call, and now that gives us a nice selection of colors. If you want to get further into customizing colors, you can also use this RGB or red, green, blue color block, or this hue, saturation, and luminosity color block in its place too. You can look up color charts for these color spaces online. And if you want me to make a video about specifying custom colors, let me know in the comments and I can talk more about that in the future. And just for fun, let's change the color to blue. I can also copy and paste this function multiple times to add a sequence of colors. Functions let you build upon what you've already built. It's kind of empowering. Let's do blue, purple, violet. So now I have a blue pixel, a purple pixel, and a violet pixel. I'm just gonna download that because it looks so fun. Blue, purple, violet, yay! Now that we have our rotate one pixel function, it'll be very easy to make another function that creates the one color wipe. We already know that the code is very similar to the rotate one pixel function. So what we can do is copy and paste the whole function and rename it. You can use copy and paste on your keyboard or right click and select duplicate. And I'll just move these functions around a little bit. You can collapse a function to give yourself more room by using this little button on the end. The software has already renamed it to be rotate one pixel two, but I want this function to be a one color wipe. So I'm going to rename it one color wipe. And just like before, the difference between the single pixel animation and the wipe is that the pixel is drawn every time the loop repeats. So the set pixel color block belongs inside the repeat loop. And I use my keyboard shortcut to move just that one block. So there we go. Now I can call this function as well by finding it in the functions drawer. 
or I can right click on a function and select create call and the function's name and that will create a block for me to use as well. The parameters here are the same, pause duration and color. So I'll make my pause duration say 50 and I can copy and paste the color picker from the other block. And let's choose green and blue and let's do one more yellow. So let's see that in action. So now we have our rotate one pixel blue, purple, violet, and now we have our one color wipe going green, blue, yellow. Yes. Boot. So I can keep copying and pasting these functions and change the parameters to play with new speeds and new color patterns. Wow, okay, well that was a lot. We learned how to shift and rotate our pixels, how to set up and animate them using a repeat loop, and how to organize our code into functions. Now that we have this structure, it's time to play. A great way to start is to duplicate one of these existing functions and try to tweak it to do something different. What does the color wipe look like without the clear at the end? Can you add more pixels to the rotate one pixel function? Can you make a function that rotates the rainbow like we did in the last video? Your next goal is to play around and try out your own animation ideas and color patterns. And once you have a bunch of these patterns, wouldn't it be nice to be able to select what animation your micro bit plays? In the next video, we'll learn how to use the buttons on the micro bit to toggle through your animations. Happy coding and I'll see you there.